Hello everyone and welcome to another random bits and pieces segment from my brain and today sit a while for we are playing some more franchise Aki Manager 6 as part of the Ottawa Senators. So we are still in 1997, we are in November, we had a decent month of October. Uh, if we can keep this pace, we are probably going to be in the playoffs for the first time, so that's definitely the goal. Um, something that I just noticed that's, I mean, it's very minor, but uh, so I am seen as having no strength uh, and a weakness in net, and that's pretty funny because that's kind of how I see my team, really. I don't think I really have a strength. Uh, at any position and I've been saying for a little bit now that I needed better goaltending so that uh, kind of evaluation uh, that the game makes seems to be pretty accurate at least for my team right now so uh, we have a big month of November ahead of us uh, we're playing Boston which is a direct rival to us uh, definitely we're gonna need to have some strong games against them uh, the first game of November is against the Bruins uh, we're playing at home so that's a good uh, good way for us to maybe start with a win here so uh, that's uh, pretty much it um, I did look at who's available on the trading block because I'm always looking to try to make my team better even though I don't make 5 million trades a year. Uh, I don't think it's really realistic when you make 5 million trades a year anyway. Uh, I do like trading and everything but I like to keep it you know, to a moderate amount. Uh, there are a couple interesting names in there. Uh, one that I'm debating... Uh, if I want to get or not. Thing is, is that all of the players that are available are all getting up in age, and that scares me a little bit. So if some of those names are still available around the trade deadline, I might make a push, uh, depending on where I'm at in the standings, but I won't make a move for a 30-something-year-old just yet, in no not in November. I want to see where my team is going to uh, get. Um, I've put Radic Bank and Thomas Olmstrom on the trade block. Again, I'm not necessarily looking to move them per se. They are both now left wingers. Uh, I just want to gauge interest, see if I can maybe get an upgrade on those two players or not. They are a good player, but they're not stars or anything like that. So uh, it's really just look at interest. I'm not necessarily absolutely looking to get rid of those guys or anything like that. Kind of like why I have Sheldon Sorry on the trading block as well. I have a lot of uh, young D in the system. Um, and he has good potential and everything. So it's just to see if I can get something really good for him. I'm not necessarily looking to absolutely trade him. Uh, so it's kind of just to gauge interest as well in that case. All right, so that's a lot of uh, talking to explain where I'm at. Oh, by the way, the player that was interesting on the trading block is Craig Janney. So he's a pretty good um, playmaker and everything, and he's available and probably would fit really well on my second line uh, behind Yashin or something like that. Uh, but I'm not sure that I want to trade for him just yet. He's 30 years old, so he might start declining soon. Uh, so, like I said, I'm always wary to get players that are 30 or higher. Uh, so, we'll see where we're at and if he's still available and whatnot. Alright, so we are playing Boston. Boston is 7-6 and six, uh, for 14 points. We are 7-6-1, and one, so we are only one point ahead of Boston. So, that game is kind of important. I know the game is in November, but those points are still very important. So let's take a look at their team. So they still have Dunham and Snow in net. Uh, they still have Sandis Ozolinch. That was a pretty good trade for them. Don Sweeney, Timander, Drew Bannister, Ray Bork, Sylvain Cote, Gord Murphy, and Jason York. So their D is pretty good. Pretty good D. Uh, Stumpel, Donato, Manderville, Murray Reed. And yeah, they still have Keep Primo. Has he been good? Uh, 25 points last year, but he has 7 points in 13 games this year, so looks like he's starting to play better. They have a pretty good team. Boston has a pretty good team. Uh, maybe not a world beater or anything like that, but pretty solid. I, they're, I'm, I would be really surprised if they're not in the playoffs. 
All right, so... Oh, that game is actually tomorrow. I thought it was today. Sorry about that. All right, Butch Goring is angry at the local media in Calgary. So Calgary doesn't have a really good start to their season. They're 4-9-1, and nine and one, so getting angry. Uh, Joe Neuendijk extends his assist streak to eight games with an assist uh, in that game against Colorado. Mario Lemieux extends his goal streak to five games. He scored two goals and an assist against the Canucks. Pretty good game. Right, Rod Brydon thinks that the season is a great success so far, and the team is in outstanding shape. Awesome. Rod Brydon is very happy with my work as the head of the Ottawa Senators. All right, so he went from being really unhappy last year. He's really happy this year. He's a little temper temperamental. Um, I don't really trust him. I don't want to be left alone in a room with him, I, I don't think. Uh, oh, so the the getting hurt, helping a friend move uh, storyline happened really early this month. So Johan Garpenlove is the one that got hurt this time. Uh, he plays right now in Phoenix, so he's going to be hurt for a couple months, uh, a couple weeks. Sorry. All right, let's play the Bruins. Oh, they did play a game um, the day before, so and they tied. So now they are seven, six, and one. They have the exact same record as us. So let's go ahead and play this. All right, let's go, team. All right, they're going with Mike Dunham, and we're going with Guy Bear. So it looks like Ebert is going to be our starter this year. He's been okay so far, but not great. And we lost to nothing. So we start the month with a loss, and it's a shutout, so it hurts even more. All right, we are slowly starting to get a little bit more attendance. So close to 9,000 people this time, so we're getting closer, I suppose. Uh, we were outshot 29-27 in this game. Mike Dunham is the first star. He had a 27 uh, save shutout performance. Uh, Norm McIver for us is the second star. He obviously didn't get any points, and Adam Oates is the third star with a goal. We're going to need to turn it around real quick. Mario Lemieux extends his, his goal streak to six games. He had a goal and an assist against the Blackhawks. So Super Mario still very dominant. 32 years old. Uh, Darian Hatcher is not suspended. Now keep in mind Hatcher had been uh, traded to Anaheim. So he plays with the Mighty Ducks now. And Junior and Dykes is his streak ended at eight games. He was held scoreless against the Phoenix Coyotes. Kevin Dahl is available. I am not going to get him. Uh, Chris Dahlquist is back from suspension in Carolina. Uh, Jerome McGinley extends his goal streak to five games. He had a goal against the Montreal Canadiens. Darren McCarty in Philly is suspended. So that's a few times he's been suspended. So he's up to 11 games now and he's 25. So that's another story like Sergei Fyodorov that we're going to need to uh, keep an eye on. See uh, how high that can get. All right. All right, Brad Ferrand's suspension is over. All right. Oh, a lot of news for today. Let's see. Good game for Steve Eiserman. He had a goal and four assists uh, in a game against Carolina. Pretty good game for Stevie Y. 32 years old, still pretty strong. So that was 12 straight games with a point for him. 
Kyle McInnes has 750 assists in his career. He is 34 years old. He is still pretty good. He had a, a goal in assist against Toronto. Rudy Postcheck in Tampa Bay is back from suspension. Dave Manson in Dallas got suspended. He's going to miss five games. Uh, Mario Lemieux got hurt. In, uh, he's going to be day-to-day. They don't say for all long. Jerome McGinley extends his goal streak to six games, so he scored a goal against Pittsburgh. So Iginla is starting to uh, become a pretty good player in this league. And, of course, he wasn't traded in Calgary like he was in real life. So he's still in Dallas. He might spend his entire career there. That might change Dallas's trajectory for, their, for that playthrough. All right, so we are now facing the Phoenix Coyotes. They have a pretty good record. They are 9-4-1 for 19 points. We have not played them this year, so obviously we're going to take a look at them and kind of drool over our good team Mussolini is. Yeah, I could use him. All right, so they have Nikolai Abibulin in net with Corey Hirsch, so Abibulin is a pretty strong force in net. No problem there. Uh, Eric Kearns, Phil Owsley, Boris Mironov, Leif Rowland, Deron Quint, Tepo Newman, Frederick Lawson, Mark Tenorti. Okay, so the D's pretty good uh, overall. Uh, Eagles, Bill Lindsay, Sean Podine. Oh, Podine. He's been in Phoenix for a couple of years. Played for the Suns. Sen, uh, Ottawa Senator alumni. <laughs> Keep it shut. All right, they have a pretty decent team. They have a couple, you know, a couple holes in the lineup, but not much. They're they're a pretty good team. I can see why they have that record. So it's going to be tough. We're playing at home. Let's go ahead and win this. Give our fans something to cheer for. Oh, they're sending Curry Hirsch in that. We're going with Gear still. So go sends go. And we won 2-1. to one. All right. I don't necessarily always want to win 8-1. to one. I mean, I will I would take that, but 2-1 to one works for me. It's a W. Uh, we were outshot 37-29. Oh, we had above 9,000 people for that game, and it was a Western Conference team, so we're creeping up in attendance a little bit. Um, Alexander Degg was the first star of the game with a goal. Timu Selene was the second star with an assist. And Guillebert was the third star with a 36 save performance for us. Pretty good. So Alexi Yashin scored on the power play from Loney Loach. And then Alexander Degg with the game winner from Jamie Baker and Tomasz Olmström. So there was, what, 2 minutes and 40 seconds left to go in the third when we scored the game winning goal so that's pretty good we were it looked like we were going in overtime but alexander Degg finished it before we got there big game for josef stumpel who had a hat trick three goals he scored all the goals for the bruins against the capitals pretty good game All right. Russ Cortnall has racked up 500 assists. So that's a pretty good little career for Russ Cortnall. Uh, still kicking it, kicking it in Dallas. He had an assist on the lone goal. That was a one nothing game. So pretty good. Yarmir Jagger extends his assist streak to eight games. He had a goal and an assist against Detroit. Steve Eiserman extends his point streak to 13 games. So in that same uh, in that same game, he had two goals. And Sergei Fyodorov is back from suspension. All right, we are about to play two games in two nights. So we are going to be facing Philadelphia uh, in the. 
tonight and then tomorrow we are going to be playing in Carolina before going back to Philly to play the Flyers again. So, yeah, we did play the Flyers uh, earlier this year and they beat us 4-3. I believe it was in overtime. So, yeah, they are now 10-4-3. So the Flyers are really good. They are second in the East. Wow. We're facing Philadelphia second in the East and then next day we're facing Carolina who is first in the East. So... Those are going to be tough challenges. All right, playing at home. Let's get a win. All right, so Jason Curry riding the net for Philadelphia. We're going with Ronick Stahl, who has a really good start to the season. And we lost 3 to 2. All right, so. Uh, all right, what do we have here? Oof. Yeah, we were outshot 47 31. Uh, we had close to 9,000 people in the attendance again, so we're, we're getting there. Well, not really. I mean, there's probably like what 17 or 18,000 people that can fit in there, so we're barely getting to you know, out of capacity. So I wouldn't say we're getting there. We're improving slowly is probably what I should have said. All right, so Mikael Renberg was the first star. He participated to all three goals for the Flyers. He had a goal and two assists. Norm McIver for us was the second star. He had a goal. And Eric Weinrich for Philly, third star with an assist. So Norm McIver opened the scoring, assisted by Mike Salinger. And then Yeshin from Radek Bank and then Alexander Degg. Interesting line. Oh, in the game against us, Rod Brennamore uh, got hurt with a broken tie. Oh, he's probably going to be out for a while. Three months. Wow. Sucks to be you. That's what happens when you beat the Ottawa Senators. We beat you down physically. Not really. I don't really have a lot of tough guys on the team. Actually, I don't have a tough guy at all, I don't think. Um, maybe Bill Guerin. Speaking of which, he hasn't gotten a point this month so far. What is he doing? Um, all right, big game for Derek King. Uh, he had a hat-trick three goals against the Montreal Canadiens. Thank you for beating the Canadiens. I always appreciate it. Yarmir Jagger extends his assist streak to nine games. He had a goal and an assist uh, against the Buffalo Sabres. All right, we are playing the next game in Carolina. Uh, we lost against them 5-2 already this year. And Carolina is 11, 4, and 2 for 24 points. So they are pretty good. They are they are now second in the East. So because Philly beat us, so they passed them. Let's see if we can win this game. It's going to be tough playing on the road. Sean Burke is going to be in net for Carolina. We're, go we're going with Guillebert. Need a win. And we lost three to one. <sighs> Can't afford to have many bad months. Oh dear lord. We were outshot 52 24, so I don't know why we're allowing so many shots on goals. I don't know if it's a coaching thing or if it's a personal thing like my players. I'm not sure. Pat Verbeek, uh, who has a pretty good start to the season, continued on that streak with uh, two goals that gives him the first star. Alexi Yashin was the second star with an assist, and Andrew Castle's third star with two assists. So Per Jew scored on the power play from Yashin and Alexander Degg. He scored with um, 28 seconds left in the game to prevent Sean Burke from having a shutout. 
Theo Fleury extends his point streak to 12 games. He had two assists against the Red Wings. And in that same game, Steve Eiserman was held scoreless, so his point streak ended at 13 games. Now, big blow for the Rangers. Brian Leach is hurt. He will miss three weeks. Looks like Brian Leach gets hurt a lot. Like, not for, like, eight months at a time or anything like that, but it seems like he's always having a little bobo somewhere or something. Alright, so the Rangers without Brian Leach for three weeks. Uh, now we're playing in Philly, so they just beat us on our home ice. Now we're playing against them in Philadelphia. Theo Fleury extends his point streak to 13 games with an assist against the Blackhawks. And then that's a scouting report. All right, playing in Philly, so they are 11-4-3 now. We have lost both games we play against them. We have slid under a 500 record, so we need to win this. We haven't been doing very good on the road so far this year. I don't know, I guess I could have gone and checked, but uh, I don't think we have a very good record on the road. It's tracked somewhere. All right, so they're going with Martin Brochu in net. We're going with Ronick Stahl. So Ronick Stahl failed to be beat the Flyers in his last game. Maybe he will this time. And we lost 2 nothing. Okay, th this is getting ridiculous. We were outshot 54 to 19. Okay, so I know Philly has a good team. I looked at their roster. They do have a good team. But, I mean, my team is not that bad. We shouldn't be allowing 50 shots a goal per game. That's crazy. All right, so despite the lot, the lot, the lost, Ronick Stahl was the first star with a 52 save performance. Roberts Vela um, was the second star, despite not getting any point, obviously. And Mark Ricky, third star with two assists. Oh, so. For once, uh, the league decided to not suspend a Vancouver Canuck player, so Len Berry is not suspended. He was suspended earlier this year. Uh, no one could stop Pavel Bury in that same game. He had three goals, so a hat-trick against the Kings. Mark Zinordi, of all people, keeps fans on their feet all night. He had a hat-trick, three goals. Mark Tinardi was never known for a very strong offensive game. Yeah, it was his first three goals of the year. That will boost your stats just a little bit. Alright, and not uh, to make anything easier, we are hosting the Detroit Red Wings for the next game at home. It's gonna be tough. Uh, all right, Bob Sweeney in Dallas got suspended. He's going to miss six games. In that same game, Mike Modano had a strong game. He had a goal and four assists against the Bruins. Pretty good game. Yaromir Jagr extends his assist streak to 10 games. He had a goal and two assists against the Washington Capitals. Good night for Trevor Linden, who had, oh, just five goals against San Jose. That's a nice little game for Trevor Linden. And um, Pat Verbeek in Carolina is going to catch somebody stepping on the logo. All right, so that's going to be tough. That stretch of games here is really not easy. Is there, a, is there even an easy team in there? I don't think there is. Wow. I'm scared to move forward. All right, so we're playing the Red Wings. They are 15 and 4. 
for a ridic ridiculous record. So Chris Osgood and Andy Moog in net. That's been the tandem there for a while. Merrick Malik Nicklitz from... I believe we played the Red Wings in preseason. Yeah, we did. I remember seeing Jonas Oglund and that I had debated sign maybe signing him and then I decided against it. We've seen uh, we've seen that lineup a couple episodes ago. All right, well, here goes nothing. Hopefully our the, hopefully the crowd is going to be behind us while we allow 71 shots on goal. All right, they're going with Chris Osgood. We're going with Gibert. And we lost five to three. Oh, we uh, we played a pretty solid defensive game. We allowed only forty-one shots on goal, and we got thirty-six of our own. Uh, Sergei Fedorov was the first star with a goal and an assist. Robert Zvela, second star for us, a goal and an assist as well. And Vyacheslav Kozlov was a third star with an assist. Wow, we actually took a 3-1 lead in this game, and then we blew it. Well, that sucks. So Zvela scored from Loney Loach, and then Alfredson on the power play from McIver and Zvela, and Yeshin on the power play from Loney Loach. Still completely absent from the score sheet, Bill Guerin, who had a good month of October, but he decided to check out in November after I gave him accolades. Now he feels like he doesn't have to try anymore. Uh, Theo Fleury extends his point streak to 14 games. That's pretty good. He had a goal and an assist against Carolina. Uh, Vinny Prospol in Philly got suspended. He's going to miss the next game. Essa Tikkanen has recorded 600 points. He pl now plays for Colorado. So he had a goal against Philadelphia. All right, so Vinny Prospel is already back from suspension. That didn't take very long. Yarmir Jagger extends his goal streak to five games with a two goals and an assist performance against the Rangers. And that was 11 games straight with an assist for him. Sean Pranger and Kelly Miller in LA a pitch in at a local homeless shelter. So they are becoming better people. And we have a trade proposal from the Dallas Stars who want to send me Joel Kowalski. Yeah, yeah, I always had problems uh, saying his name. He, I know he did play in real life uh, for a very short time for the Suns. For Brad Larson, I, I don't think so. I'm going to keep Brad Larson. I might need him down the stretch. All right, so we've been sliding. We're still seventh in the East, but uh, we're holding on by just a tread, and we also have played a lot of games compared to people behind us. Um, we are facing Boston. They beat us two nothing at the start of the month. They are, Boston is now ten eight and one. So we're playing in Boston, and then we're coming back home to play them in two days. Come on, guys. Come on, Bill. I didn't sign you to be pretty on the bench. I signed you to score goals and punch people's faces or something. And we lost 4-3. We cannot win a hockey game. And we were outshot 43-33. to Sandis Ozalinch was the first star of the game. He had two goals and an assist. That's a pretty good game. And Robert Zvela for us had an assist. He's the second star. And Josef Stumpel, third star, two goals and an assist. All right, so Daniel Alfredson scored on the power play from Zvela and Loni Loach. Then Mike Selinger scored from Garen and Kelly Johansson. Then we made it interesting. It was 4-2, and we and six seconds after Josef Stampel made it 4-2, Alexi Yeshin scored from Peltonen and, and Roman Amerlik. But then we ran out of gas and could not tie the game. No, 
It looks like Norm McIver got hurt for three days. All right. Theo Fleury's point streak ended at 14 games. He was held scoreless against uh, uh, provincial rivals Edmonton Oilers. And Jagger's assist streak ended at 11 games. He was held uh, scoreless against the Toronto Maple Leafs. All right, so obviously I'm not going to obviously I'm not going to do anything with Norm McIver's injury. That's a playable injury, and it's only for a few days, so there's absolutely no need to put him on injured reserve. Uh, Dave Manson is back from suspension in Dallas, and there was no stopping Trevor Linden, who just after shortly after getting a five-goal game, now he had a hat trick, three goals against Carolina. All right, we're playing the Bruins again. We've seen them a few times this month and they've been beating us too, that's not good. So Boston is 11, eight and one now. And we've slid to 8, 12, and 1, so really not a good month. Oh, we're. I hate that we're making things too interesting for us. <laughs> I'd like to have a good, easy season where, you know, we finish second or third in the East or something, not have to worry about making the playoffs too much. All right, let's see here. So we're sending McIver because he's art. That's fine. I am okay with that. Boston's going with Mike Dunham. We're going with Guillebert. And let's, uh, let's sacrifice a BB unicorn or something. For good luck, of course. And I'm sure that BB unicorns taste great. All right, we avenged the two losses against Boston in one package of a game, and we trounced them 7-1. to one. Finally, we did something. Um, we had very close to 9,000 people in the attendance. Uh, Boston had completely outshot us again, 52-35. That's... Whoa. You know, it used to be bad, and it got to a point where it was not too bad, and I have almost the same personal, so I, I'm guessing it's coaching that might be the problem, like the tactics used or something. Maybe Roger Nielsen doesn't believe in defense. I don't know. So, oh, pretty good game for Alexi Ashen. Finally, I thought that he was pretty quiet this season. He had first star with two goals and four assists. So six points for Yashin. That's really good. Guillebert was the second star with 51 saves. And Daniel Alfredson was the third star with a goal and two assists. So pretty strong uh, game from for Yashin. So Andreas Dackel scored from Arvidsson and Brian McCabe. And that's the only goal that Yashin would not participate in. He participated to all the other goals we scored. So then we have Zalepski on the power play from Yashin and Zvela. And then Peltonen from Amerlik and Yashin. Zalepski on the power play again from Yashin and Alfredson. Yashin on the power play from Alfredson. Yashin from Brunet and Zvela. And then Alfredson from Zalepski and Yashin. So Zalepski had himself a pretty good game too. Uh, two goals and an assist. Pretty good. Big game for Alexi Yashin. I know. I was there. I was in the stands. I cheered. I spill, spilled my beer. Who am I kidding? I'm not drinking on a job. I didn't do that. All right. Next game is going to be tough. It's at home, but it's going to be against Pittsburgh. A strong night for Team Mussolini. He had a goal and four assists uh, against the Oilers. All right, that's a pretty long, 
uh, scouting report here. Norm McIver is primed to return. That's pretty good. Oh, Vladimir Wojtek is uh, the young player. Well, he's 25. He's not that young anymore. Uh, that stepped on the logo in Carolina. Oh, Jamie McLennan is... Uh, is put on waivers. Sean McEachern extends his assist streak to eight games with an assist against the Bruins right before playing us. Eric Lindros extends his goal streak to five with a goal and an assist against the Maple Leafs. All right, so we have what? One, two, three, four, five, five games left in the month. Most of them are at home. I'd like to be able to win most of them and bring me back to close to uh, at least close to 500. So Pittsburgh, uh, after the first month, was not doing too good, but they've turned things around a little bit. They are now 13, 8, and 2. And I believe we looked at them in preseason. We're going to look at them again. So Tom Barrasso and Peter Scudra in net. Barrasso starting to. Uh, lose abilities only a star and a half now and then yeah i remember looking at that and saying they still scare me but not as much they're not as scary as they used to be but they're still pretty pretty good all right we are hosting pittsburgh go sends go tom barrasso in net for pittsburgh we're going with ronick stall who has troubles winning trouble winning game, but he has a really good 942 save percentage. So he's stopping a lot of pucks, but uh, we still lose. And we won this one in overtime, 43. That's a pretty good uh, performance. We've had we've had a lot of problems beating the Penguins in the past, so that win here is pretty good. So we had over 9,000 people in the stands. That's pretty good. Uh, we outshot them 47 to 31. Uh, they outshot us 47 to 31. Sorry. Uh, I got carried away by my attendance, I guess. Um, first star of the game was Jamie Baker. He had a good game uh, with two assists. Ron Francis was the second star with two assists and pair of juice for us. Third star with a goal. All right, so Perju scored from Andreas Dackel and Loni Loach. Yeah, Dackel is really not having a good season. I mean, Andreas Dackel was never a really strong offensive force or anything like that. But, you know, we're nearing the end of November and he just putted his first assist. That's that's not good enough. All right, it's from Dackel and Loni Loach. Alexi Yeshin on the power play from Norm McIver and Tomasz Olmström from Jamie Baker and then in overtime the hero was Alexander Degg from Jamie Baker and Magnus Harvinson awesome and we stopped Sean McEachern's assist streak at eight games he did score but he didn't get an assist so we stopped that for him always nice to stop somebody else's streak Michael Pekka extends his assist streak to eight games. He had two assists against Phoenix. And we are playing our next game at home against the Edmonton Oilers. So Edmonton is struggling a little bit. They are 9, 12, and 2, so they have a similar record to us. Uh, we're 10, 12, and 1. Very similar records. Edmonton is struggling. Uh, like, they had a couple good runs a few years ago in my universe. Uh, but uh, they've been struggling a little bit of late. So let's take a look at their lineup. Let's see if we can figure out why. So they have Roman Turek in it. So he's okay, I suppose. And then Steve Shields as the backup. That's... Eh, that's okay, I guess. Yeah, their D is not uh, 
their D is probably why they're not winning so much. Uh, Ladislav Benisek, Greg Augut, Mike Hurlbut, Matthew Decoto, Sean O'Donnell, and Luke Richardson. That's you know that's your D right there. That yeah, that's not uh, not very good. All right, so they have Miroslav Shatan, of course, Berenik, Ryan Smith. Yeah, their their offense is okay. Uh, they have a few good players, but yeah, there's that that D is probably why they're not winning as much as they hope they would. All right, let's let's play the orders at home and hopefully we can win this. They're going with Roman Turek. He's completely on fire, and we're going with Gieber. He's completely cold. Yay! And we lost 4 to 1. Alright, so they outshot us 29 27. Uh, we had 8,472 people in the attendance. So didn't draw as much against the orders. Uh, Josef Beranik was the first star of the game with a goal and an assist. Ladislav Benisek was the second star with an assist. And Miroslav Shatan was the third star with a goal. So the lone goal for us was scored by Robert Zvela from Kelly Johansson and Mike Selinger. Hmm. Dale Arachuk has achieved 1,500 points in his career. That's pretty good. He's 34, so he still has time to put up a few more points. He had three assists in that game against the Islanders. And in that same game, Pierre Turgeon had a good game. He had a hat-trick, three goals. Uh, Patrick Shelberg in Montreal is not suspended. Memorable night for Claude Lemieux. He had a hat trick three goals against the Florida Panthers. And Michael Pekka extends his assist streak to nine games. He had an assist against Chicago. Alright, next game's against Detroit in Detroit. Another game that's going to be tough. Uh, no further action for Nicola on Nicholas Wallen in Carolina, so he is not suspended. Raimo Helmenen donates time and money to cancer research, so he plays for St. Louis. He is now a better person. Uh, Bob Sweeney is back from suspension in Dallas. Good for them. Red light stays on for Donald Adet. He had a hat trick, three goals against Pittsburgh. Strong game for Dale Auerchuk. So he had another good game, four assists in that one, in that same game. So he assisted on every single goal the Sabres scored. So Dale Auerchuk is, is on a nice little streak there. Scouting report. Gonna delete that. And Blue Star Rex, one of a kind car, Curtis Joseph. What is it with those Aki stars who are not being very careful when they're driving really expensive cars? I mean, <clears throat> my car is a piece of junk and I'm being careful with it. All right, Jeff Courtnall extends this point streak to 12 games. That's pretty good. Jeff Courtnall having a good run. He's 35 now, so he's probably not going to play 5 million more years. Uh, he had a goal against the Rangers. And in that same game, Michael Pickle was not able to get an assist, so his streak ended at 9 games. All right, we are playing the Red Wings. Uh, they managed to get even better since last time we played them. They are not, <coughs> excuse me, they are not 21 and 4.
so it's scary. Of course, they beat us 5-3 to three on our home ice earlier this month. So the best we can do really is... Uh, maybe not show up for the game. I don't know. Alright, Ronick Stahl is going to face Chris Osgood. Oh, ho, ho, ho. So the Red Wings was were 21 and 4 and we trounced them 7 to 3. So we've been having a couple of those games where we're just like, all right, we're going to score goals today. So, wow. I was not expecting that. Good thing that my team didn't follow my advice and not show up and actually showed up and played well. Uh, we were outshot 36-29, so that number, I don't have a problem with that because the Red Wings are really good, so that's, you know, that's okay with me. Yashin had another good game, two goals and two assists, so whenever Yashin decides to put the team on his back, uh, he really does so. So two goals and two assists for Yashin, first star, Alfredson, second star with a goal and two assists, and Loney Loach was the third star with three assists. So let's see here what we have. Uh, we have Roman Amerlich from Daniel Alfredson and Alexey Yashin. Daniel Alfredson on the power play from Lonnie Loach and Alexey Yashin. And then Yashin on the power play from Lonnie Loach. So we were up 3 nothing after 1. And then Yashin from Peltanen. And then Norm McIver from Jimmy Baker. And after 2 we were up 5 nothing. Norm McIver from Daniel Alfredson. And then finally... Seventh goal was scored by Alexander Degg from Brian McCabe and Loney Loach. Pretty good game. Pretty happy with that. Steve Duchesne has a strong game. He had a hat trick, three goals against Tampa Bay. Yeah, it looks like everybody's beating on Tampa Bay again this year. They have a whopping seven points in 23 games so far. All right, we have two games left in the month. Uh, both at home, we're playing the Capitals, and then we're playing the Blackhawks. So, playing Washington now, uh, today. So, Washington is 10-14-1. So, they're doing a little bit better than they were, but they're still struggling. Uh, they are right behind us for a playoff spot. We are holding the 8th spot with an 11-13-1 record. So, we only have two points more than they do so they are going to catch up with us if we lose this let's take a look at their lineup let's see uh, what they have besides Kozig so Kozig and Dwayne Rolason and uh, okay that's a good tandem I totally would take that over what I have uh, Gonshar Kelly Ulls uh, Per Gustafsson Peter McLeod, Murray Barron, Nonbaum Gartner, Cayman Hatcher, Sish Krieger, Clark Wilm. Yeah. All right, they they have good players uh, meshed up with bad players, so that's an interesting mix. They have a lot of one-star players on their lineup. But they have a couple of really good players like Bandra and Allison and Ristich. Alright, let's see what we can do against them. Alright, they're going with Olaf Kolzig. We are going with Gibber. And we won 41. All right. Oh, we actually outshot somebody. 41 to 22. Oh, there was only 7,035 people in attendance. I guess the Capitals suck, so nobody wanted to come to the game. They should come for us, though. I mean, Yashin is starting to be on fire. They should want to come and watch us. Uh, Norm McIver was the first star with a goal and an assist. Uh, Zardy Zalepski <coughs> was the second star with an assist. And Vil Peltonen was the third star with an assist. So Yashin opened the scoring on the power play from Norm McIver and Loney Loach. Kelly Owanson from Vili Peltonen. And then Norm McIver from Arvidsson and Zalepski. 
Then finally, in the third period, Bill Guerin finally scored a goal this month from Pear Juice. And then Mikhail Pivanka from Pet Peak with 46 seconds left in the game prevented uh, Guibert from having a shutout. Okay, that might be part of why we... Uh, I'm gonna have to take a closer look at the giveaways stat here. Now, we did outshot them 41-22, but I wonder if I'm, you know, like they turned the puck over only twice and we turned the puck over 12 times. So if that number is always high like that, that might be why we get outshot so much. All right. So one game left in the month. We are playing the Blackhawks. Oh, Trevor Linden is hurt in Vancouver. He was having a pretty good month. He's going to be out for three weeks with a... Oh, ugh. oh, now that must hurt. With a ruptured testicle. So I have never experienced it, and I am glad I have not. I can only imagine... Jeff Courtnell's point streak ended at 12 games, so he was held scoreless against the Bruins. Strong night for Mark Rickey. Hat trick three goals against uh, the Islanders. Strong game for Glenn Wesley, who now plays in San Jose. He had a hat trick three goals against the Devils. Is it just me or the Devils are struggling a little bit this year? Nah. They're back up. They're fifth in the East. They're fine. All right, we are playing the Black. Ooh, the Blackhawks are struggling. What's going on over there? They are seven, sixteen, and three. Oh God. Okay. Yeah, I can see what's going on there. It's like they have, you know, three players, and the rest is not that good. Like, they have Belfort, Chelios, and Ronick, and not a whole lot much more than that. Oh, boy. Former Ottawa Senator Randy Mackey is playing there. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, what's going on there, but, uh, yeah. Lots of one-star players. All right, let's finish the month with a win. With a win, we're going to be playing 500. So that's still kind of putting us <coughs> in a position where we can make the playoffs. And then we can only hope that uh, December is not going to be as rough on us. We did play a lot of really good teams in November, so... All right, Ed Bell for in net for Chicago. We're going with Ronick Stall. Go, sense go. Let's finish the month with a win. And we lost to nothing. Oh boy. All right. So yeah, again, you know we we gave the puck away a lot more than they did, and they took the puck away a lot more than we did. So although we did get. 29 shots and they got 25 we had close to 10,000 people in the attendance so maybe we're starting to turn things around a little bit with that <clears throat> and that was a bad team uh, Ed Belfort got the first star with the 29 save performance second star was Daniel Alfredson even though we didn't get any he didn't get any point and Steve Smith third star with an assist so we're not gonna look at anything we didn't score all right brendan shannon in st louis got suspended he's gonna miss eight games and darren mccarty is back from suspension in philadelphia <coughs> and we are going to advance one more day because we are the 30th All right, development report. Um, 
Yeah, McCabe needs to start getting better soon. Marianosa is already a star and a half. I'm going to need to play him pretty soon. Maybe not just yet, but pretty soon. Uh... All right. <clears throat> All right, so Trevor Linden was the player of the month in the NHL, and Grant Fior in Toronto was the goaltender of the month. So those are your recipients. All right, so if we look at the standings in the East, um, it's pretty tight. We are seventh with 25 points. Uh, the same amount as the Rangers, but the Rangers have played one more game, so they are eight. And then the Capitals are only two points behind us. The Islanders, three points behind us with a game on hand. Then it starts to go down from there. So, yeah, it looks like a tough month again. <clears throat> I mean, I see, you know, the Kings. I see Buffalo. I see uh, home and home with Carolina. I see Montreal. <laughs> so, yeah. Not gonna be an easy month in December either. I guess there's no easy games or very few of them. So let's take a look at our stats. After two months, Bill Guerin really slowed down. So, yeah. He was almost a point per game. Now he's, you know, almost half a point per game. So he has 15 points in 27 games now. But Yeshin really had a good month. He is now a point per game, 27 points in 27 games. Alfredson, 17 points in 26 games. And then it kind of dwindles down from there. So looks like when Yeshin and Alfredson are playing well, looks like we are going to be winning. If not, it's going to get tougher. All right, now if I look in the West for, all right, and in the West, Detroit is all alone with 44 points. And then Colorado, Vancouver, oh, the Kings are struggling a little bit. They are eight. And yeah, Tampa Bay is by far, and I mean by far, the worst team in the league. They have nine points. They have two wins in 25 games. Imagine, wow. I'm glad I'm not Tampa Bay. <clears throat> right, let's see if Iserman is still the, the MVP. Well, Iserman is the... Best goal scorer, he has 21 goals. Pat Verbeek is second with 18, so we did see that he was doing pretty good uh, this year. Uh, for the assists, Selani has 36, he's first. And for the points, Iserman has 53, Selani has 52. And then it drops to Kozlov with 44. So it looks like it's going to be a race between Iserman and Selani for whoever is the best scorer. And interestingly... There's no Mario Lemieux in there, or Wayne Gretzky. Wow. The league is changing. All right. Oh, the best uh, playoff, per, uh, playoff, the best face-off percentage uh, belongs to uh, Ottawa Senators Matt Cullen. All right. Maybe it wasn't a bad signing after all. He's not really racking up points. <laughs> yeah, he's not. He has an assist in 19 games. Uh, but he's winning face-offs. I guess that's something. Uh, Alexi Yashin has eight power play goals. So let's put him... Well, it says 10th here, but really it's second. Tied with many other people. All right, so we're starting to see people from our teams in some categories, I guess. So hopefully that keeps... Uh, happening we need to win some games so we're gonna save this and that's where we stand seventh in the east we need a stronger month of december to kind of solidify our spot but uh, we're still in a playoff picture 
So I'm going to go ahead and call this a video as usual. Thank you for tuning in. And if you've liked the video, as usual, feel free to like and subscribe. That's always appreciated. And until I roll this game again, see you guys next time. Thank you.